Hey Gadget Groupies, Lenovo is back in our offices with another yoga tablet offering. I was a really big fan of the 10-inch Windows variant, and the updated Android Yoga Tab 3 Pro now includes a projector and Lenovo's AnyPen screen technology, so let's check them out! Walking around the hardware, this is pretty well-established design territory for Lenovo, a slate with a cylindrical bottom which houses a large 10,200 mAh battery and a 50-lumen projector capable of producing up to a 70-inch display. The stand rotates out of the battery bulb and offers up three additional orientations. Lenovo championed flexible multi-mode usage, and the yoga can be used in tilt mode, stand mode, or there's a cutout in the stand to hang the tablet up. Behind that stand, you'll find a cutout housing a micro SD card slot to expand upon your internal storage of 32 gigabytes. I still find the camera placement to be a bit awkward, as the yoga positions their rear camera on the battery bulge, making it nearly impossible to use when the tablet is in stand mode. The front face is a bright and juicy 10 point one inch quad HD LCD. The aspect ratio is a slightly fatter 16 by 10, making it just a little easier to use in portrait mode. Happily, Lenovo didn't shave resolution off the horizontal, instead adding vertical lines for a total resolution of 2560 by 1600. Below that screen is a four speaker array of Dolby certified JBL speakers. We have a separate video demonstrating audio playback, and they are pretty loud for a tablet. Lenovo now identifies the top of the tablet where the front facing camera is when the slate is held with the battery bulge on the left hand side. We also have a separate video showing that selfie camera quality, but spoiler alert, it's just okay. The left side of the tablet has the power button, micro USB port, microphone, and the volume rocker. The right side has the projector toggle switch and the headphone jack. I was very surprised by headphone playback quality. It's upper mid pack, especially compared to some of the recent smartphones we've tested like the LG V10. But the best surprise of all is that the audio input from that headphone jack is surprisingly clean. It's a great little piece of hardware for video calls and audio chat, especially when you're using a headset. I've always liked the Yoga tablet design, but this newest Pro Tab delivers one of my favorite combinations of materials. The majority of the tablet frame is metal, and the back is now clad in a faux leather plastic. It's got a great feel in the hand, it's easy to hold on to, and it looks professional. Lenovo has managed to deliver a tablet style similar to one of my favorite phones, Samsung's Note 4. If there is a nitpicky in terms of build, the hinge on my review unit had a little more wobble to it than any other Yoga Tab I've reviewed in the past. A minor criticism to be sure, but at this price point, it's an uncharacteristic blemish from a company which has consistently delivered top-notch build quality. Also a point of concern with any yoga tablet, the edges of the stand are very well finished. But one should always take care when using the tablet on wooden tabletops. Dragging the tab can scratch up the finish on your table pretty easily. Lenovo shares one general hardware design between their Windows and Android offerings. This likely helps them cut back on design costs using largely the same overall components. This tab is running Android 5.1 powered by an Intel Atom quad-core processor. The Z8500 is more powerful than the last Atom-powered tab we reviewed, and it seems to have helped in eliminating some of the hitches and lags we found on the 13-inch Yoga Tab. The UI is snappier, more responsive, and more fluid. Happily, Lenovo has walked away from their previous Android skin, which turned your home screens into the app drawer and uses a more traditional Android user interface. I don't feel an instant need to install a third-party launcher anymore. There are still a few software additions, a Windows-style sidebar docs shortcuts to controls. Here you can enable auto-awareness for the different modes the yoga can be used in, or activate and focus the projector. Lenovo also adds support for multi-window apps, mimicking the way Windows 10 displays programs. This is a fantastic feature for a productivity-focused machine, but there are some frustrating omissions. I'm able to add games to the menu of multi-window apps, but I can't find a way to add core Google services like Gmail, Maps, or Chrome, key services which someone would likely want to be able to multitask with. It's a nice effort though, and I can't really blame Lenovo here as I feel this is a situation Google should have fixed a long while ago by building in proper multitasking support directly into the Android operating system. There's also a little bloat pre installed Lenovo, including Evernote, Netflix, McAfee, and their own share and sync solutions. People who use those services certainly won't mind them being included. I stream a ton of Netflix, but I was happy to see that I could easily uninstall the apps I don't use like McAfee and Evernote. In-app performance has been fantastic. Gaming performance, for example, falls just behind the fluidity of an Exynos-powered Samsung. Marvel Future Fight played snappy with few lags and quick loading times. Intel's chipset didn't seem to have any issues with more intense lighting and particle effects. This beast won't have any issues loading up productivity software like Microsoft 
Office apps. I easily wrote most of this review on the Yoga in Word on a Bluetooth keyboard. Performance here was nearly indistinguishable from my experiences using Atom-powered PCs. If there's a weak link here, I'm still not the biggest fan of Android on larger screen sizes. I think there's a lot of wasted space in Lollipop when stretching out to a 10-inch diagonal. Also, much like how I might criticize a product like the iPad Pro, a lot of mobile apps still haven't quite caught up to desktop software equivalents. Eventually, all software will be written like apps instead of legacy desktop programs. But right now, Google has some of the same problems Apple has in convincing developers to produce more robust software solutions. Battery life is certainly impressive. Standby times were almost impossible to properly test as this thing lasted for days with no use. The Yoga performed very well in our video test, streaming 30 minutes of HD video over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness, only drained 5% of the battery, making it one of the best devices we've ever run through this test. Lenovo claims around 18 hours of use, and I'm inclined to believe them. Now, fast charging is listed on the spec sheet, but the combo of Intel chipset and huge mungus battery means a full charge will still be fairly slow going. In testing the tab on a certified fast charger, I was averaging around 18% per hour. That puts a full charge under five hours. Now this might sound like a long time, but each hour you're charging almost a full phone battery capacity, and it's radically faster than charging one of my extended run power bricks. One of the signature features of this tablet is of course the projector. It's a fairly unique add-on for this class of tablet. For presentations or for watching some video, it can be a handy way to blow up an image if you have the screen or wall space to support it. I think the bulb here is bright enough for most uses, provided you aren't trying to compete with too much ambient light. The on-screen controls for focusing work well enough, though I do kind of miss the hardware focusing from the last generation Yoga Tab. It wasn't better, I just liked that manual switch feel. The speakers fire up vertically when using the projector, and they should be loud enough for medium-sized rooms in your home, but moving to more of a classroom-sized space, you might need to feed audio to a larger speaker. Lenovo also built their AnyPen technology into this Yoga screen. Uh, basically, any metal object can be used as a stylus to control the tablet. Forks, keys, you name it. Now, people might get cringe about taking metal objects to their display, but you shouldn't be able to scratch up glass with metal unless you're pressing hard enough to start cracking the display or you're using some kind of hardened or carbonized steel, not the kind of metal found in keys or coins. You're far more likely to scratch up modern glass screens with dirt, grit, or sand. Getting that disclaimer out of the way, any pen is a solid feature for making sure you always have some kind of stylus solution handy. I'm not sure how often I'll actually poke at my screen with a fork, but I'm happy to know that I can in a pen. I think it would be kind of cool if Lenovo would include or sell a polished, rounded aluminum stick with the tablet to introduce this feature. So where's that leave us with the Lenovo Yoga Tab 3 Pro? I really like this hardware. I've been a big fan of Lenovo tablets for a couple years now. The build quality is on point, the feature set is unique, and it's capable mobile hardware. It stacks up well against competitors like the Surface 3 or iPad Air 2 in that it has a higher resolution screen, larger battery, and a projector for the same price. The main question becomes, can you get your work done with Android as the operating system? And if there are apps for your workflow, then the Yoga becomes a very compelling solution for a premium mid-sized tablet. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it by hitting the fan funding, using my Amazon affiliate links, shopping for a loot crate, grabbing yourself a free audiobook, or by sharing my videos on your favorite social sites like Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, and the Googles Plus. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.